Hey guys, Bob Morielli here with the Tuning School. On today's Tech Tuesday, you are going to learn how easy it is to use a Power Commander 5 and to tune motorcycles. All right, so today we're going to talk about the Suzuki C90. It's a 2006 model that we've got that we're going to go ahead and install the Dynajet Power Commander 5 on. Now on the Suzuki, you can't do spark advance, but you can control fuel. And so as you'll find out going through the process, even if you can just control fuel, after you've made some mods to your bike, you can find a lot more power and better drivability. And it's even easier than you think. So why don't you go ahead and watch the process as we work through our Suzuki now. All right, so as you can see in these two pictures, uh, we begin working on our Suzuki by removing several bolts that hold the side covers on. All right, so uh, the next step in our process here is going to be to remove the air filter, as you can see in these pictures here, and then that'll give us some more room to work as we proceed through the process. And as you can see, in order to remove the air box and the air filter, you're going to have to remove a couple of clips and hoses that will get reattached later. However, it does leave some extra room to be able to get to the area we need to. All right, so in this step, we're going to go ahead and uh, connect up the injectors and any other uh, connections that need to be made, such as the throttle position uh, on our Suzuki. So we're going to go ahead and uh, disconnect by getting our hands down and in by the throttle bodies to disconnect where the injectors are currently connecting by pushing the little release clip and then going ahead and connecting in our new supplied wires that came with the power commander. So at this stage you want to be sure that you can get to everything nice and easily so you can make sure that all of the supplied connections can be made and then put away nice and neatly. Alright so the next step in our process is to find a good ground can't emphasize this one strongly enough because if you have a bad ground or a ground that's kind of just got some paint on it or going through some materials that are not metal such as a plastic cover you're gonna find that your ground will be either be non-functional like at all to where the power commander won't even work or you're gonna find that it's glitchy and it causes you kind of glitchy problems with the performance so uh, that's because it's got a poor ground so as you can see in ours here we went ahead and found a good ground through uh, good metal in an existing hole on our Suzuki here we went ahead and just unscrewed uh, unbolted the, uh, the bolt here and then slipped our O uh, our O ring on over it from our ground wire to our power commander now just always be sure when you're done and you bolt it up and it's good and snug that it's not going to get pinched or cut into by anything that goes on later in the process such as plastic side covers or tanks or anything like that. And once you have everything uh, connected up nice and firm and tight, before you put the bike completely back together, you need to do a test run and be sure that everything is working good. So uh, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that all the connections that were available are made so you don't have any empty connections. And then the next thing you want to do is go ahead and fire up your laptop. Now in our case we've gone ahead and installed the software. We had it installed already. Uh, so we'll show you how to do that and, and, and this process uh, a little bit later. But since we already had ours uh, installed, we'll go ahead and fire up the software and get it, get it running so that when we fire up the bike, we'll be able to watch it and make sure everything's working right. All right, and the last step in this process is going to be to permanently mount uh, the Power Commander 5 and just finding a good spot where it's out of a direct uh, heat source is going to help with longevity. So go ahead and use the provided tape and or any other supplies like a zip tie that you might feel to keep it permanently mounted in a good spot. Okay, so now if you've made it this far, you're about ready to do some tuning. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and use the uh, included CD-ROM that came with your Power Commander. Or if you don't have it, you can always go on to the website, the PowerCommander.com website. You can download the software as we're showing here. And then also, you can go ahead and do what's called downloading the maps. Now, maps are kind of like a preloaded uh, setup or settings so that you can adjust things like your fuel um, without having to start from scratch. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and use the maps. Um, and if you don't, you can always start from scratch, as I'm going to show you here in the next segment. All right, so assuming you want to go ahead and make a... Uh, fuel table from scratch. Uh, this is going to be an easy demo on how to do that. 
Now, sometimes you may not like the maps that you can download with it or that were included, or sometimes you may have access to a Dyna, which would make this really easy. If you have something like a uh, wideband where you could use an air fuel gauge to kind of help guide you to get the air fuel to where it makes the best power, and you have the bike on a dyno, this is really the best way to do it. So what we recommend you do in order to make this um, this kind of efficiently is you want to kind of make this modeled after the, the efficiency of the engine. Now the engine really is an air pump, which means it's going to have a a low spot, a high spot, and a low spot, which means it's going to make a little bit of power and then it's going to rise, rise, rise and make maximum power at some RPM and then it's going to kind of fall off after that. So for our example, we're just going to go ahead and use a range of about 1250 RPM as the start point where the power really kind of starts coming on and then we're going to say that it peaks at about 5250 and we're going to say that it kind of falls off by 6500. So if you were to draw a curve, it would kind of look like a bell. So that's typical of most engines. They kind of rise and then eventually kind of fall off as the engine runs out of efficiency. So we're going to make our fuel table resemble this. And you're going to do this just as a starting point. It, it's not perfect. It's not going to be your end point. But it's going to be a good starting point so that when you go ahead and do test it with your wideband, if you have one of those and if you also have access to a dyno, you can go ahead and start from there and move in more quickly. Now this process does take a little bit of time, but I'm going to go through each of the cells and start typing in the numbers. So I'm going to start here at 5% throttle and I'm going to end over here at 100% throttle, obviously. So I'm going to start, I've entered a number 2 here just as 2% more fuel. That's basically what that represents. And then I've put an end point here of 6% more fuel. So that's going to be my peak. And you'll see as I fill these in, and I'm just going to kind of blend them up until I hit that peak. So I'm going to start putting some 2s in, and some 3s, and then some 4s, and some 5s, and then some 6s. And I've got my 6 a little higher than I thought. I'll put my 6 there. And then eventually it's going to taper off. 5, 5, and maybe a 4. And so now I have a good starting point for the 5% throttle range from 1200 uh, 1250 RPM all the way up to 6500. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, but I like to go to the far side of the table, which will give me a start and an end that I can work with. So I can fill in the middle and kind of estimate better. So I've already put a 12 in here and a 20, where I think the peak is at 5250. So it gives me a little bit of guidelines as I start punching numbers in, so I won't drive myself crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some 12s, some 13s, some 14s, 15s, 16, 17, 18, and a 19, a 20, there we go. I'll put another 20, and then I'll kind of taper it down. 18, 18. So that should pretty well, pretty well follow the curve or the, the airflow of the engine. So we'll go ahead and put this video in fast forward motion now while I fill in the rest of this chart, but you're welcome to watch and see the end. Okay, and now I have finished building a nice graduated fuel table. Now, like I said earlier, it won't be perfect, but it'd be a great starting point. So basically, as you give it more throttle, you go up to 100% throttle, as you look left to right in the table, you will be able to see it start with a small number, 2% more fuel here, for example, and work its way to the right, all the way up to 12% more fuel. Same way it goes uh, top to bottom. So if you were cruising at, say, 20%, and then you hammered the throttle, it went all the way to the right, and then down. So it would go all the way to 100%, and then it would go down this table, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18%, 20%, and then on down. So the way it works is, as you go in more throttle, you get more fuel. As you go higher with RPMs, you get more fuel to a point, which we figured was about here, was our peak, 52, 55, and then it kind of comes down a little bit. Now, as I said, just an estimate as to what we think this engine is going to be and where it's going to peak on power, but that's really what you could do if you have your access to a dyno. You can go ahead and do a run, and you can say, okay, I was close, but over here it needs more fuel, maybe over here it needs less fuel, 
in order to make more power. So you're going to want to go in and dial this table up or down and see when you make more power to find the optimal air fuel ratio. If you have a bike that actually is capable of doing spark advance too, you could do the same type of thing with one of those maps, but you'd want to make your adjustments in small one or two degree increments and taking a stock map and go up one or two degrees at a time just to see until you find peak power without any problems. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to learn a little bit more, you can always visit Dynajet's PowerCommander.com website for information on the actual unit, installation, and pricing. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the tuning process for cars, bikes, or anything like that, go ahead and visit us online at thetuningschool.com or give us a call at 727-264-8875. Have a great day.